Hi everybody. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have been requesting how this is all set up and uh, I kind of drew a picture the best I could. I hope everybody can follow along and see exactly how this goes here. First I'm going to talk about the coil and then the uh, relay and read switch, how that's set up how I'm collecting the back EMF, I think I'm doing it right, who knows I'm sure some of you guys will tell me something different, but that's fine um, how I'm capturing the uh, electricity off of the collapsing magnetic field over here and then of course down below how I wired the new stator that was the old one, you guys can remember that one I do have a new one and that's what the last figures I got is on the new stator three phase I'll go over that six pole uh, rotor okay and I'll go through that too so this is the coil it's got an iron core one inch by two and a half inches long around that are 22 and 26 gauge windings 650 windings wound in parallel okay now off of the battery the negative side of the battery there's two wires coming off of that okay that's these two one goes to the coil the top end of the coil that gives you your push the other one off the negative goes to one end of the reed switch here okay just trying to focus here okay off the positive side of the battery here you see when I connect those it starts running you can all hear that Doo -doo -doo. okay so off the positive side there we go that goes to on your relay to the number 86 spot on your relay number 86 one of those positive cables the other end of the positive side goes to 30 on the relay alright now we have our battery connections off of the 87 of the relay is to the other end of the coil the bottom end of your bifiller coil okay see here's 87 relay that goes to the bottom end of the coil alright number 85 goes to the other end of the reed switch right there okay so we got that end set up now to capture the back EMF from what I have read this is how I have it set up one end of my bridge rectifier, full wave bridge rectifier one of these guys here okay one end off the coil goes to the AC part of the bridge rectifier the other part of the coil the other winding goes to obviously the other AC part of the bridge rectifier, the little squiggly, squiggly line. Now from there I go from the positive into the cap, it's a 2200 microfarad 50 volt cap and I use 50 volts because with no load on that bridge rectifier it can get anywhere up to you know 38, 40 volts. I don't want to burn out the cap so. Anyway, uh, then I have in parallel with the light bulb and that's what you see in the videos okay the cap in parallel with the light bulb alright now 
off the second winding. Okay, that's the two small wires. Okay, you'll see a big one and a small one. Okay, this is the small one. This is the 26 gauge. All right, off one, uh, off each wire goes to the AC alternating current part of the bridge rectifier. Right here. Okay, that's my second bridge. Okay, you see it comes right off the coil. Then we go positive and negative respectively into the cap and in parallel with the bulb, the light bulb. Okay. That's that. That's without the alternator. Now we're going to go over the alternator. So you have this set up so I can adjust the height. I have it at a 90 degree angle along with my rotor so I can get it as close as possible without touching. See that? And it works very well. Alright. This is a six pole alternator because it has six magnets opposite poles north south north south north south on a saw blade you want to put your your magnets on a metal sheet because it increases the magnetic field so I've read okay and I think I'm pretty right about that one now I made some coils that I didn't show you guys just that it was working this is a three phase system wired in a star pattern this is how it works for every two magnets you need three coils for this to work so if you have six magnets you need nine coils if you have 12 magnets you need 18 coils so on and so forth and in three phase you have three coils in one phase because each magnet is a north-south so you need that to complete one phase in a three-phase system that's why I have these numbered one two and three then it goes one two three and then one two three and then from there I have it A and B A is the start of the coil that would be the inside wire B would be the outside wire or the end of the coil. Okay, I'll show you that here. A and B, this is how I've marked it. You can see the start of the coil, I put the line inside, the end of the coil is the B on the outside. They all have to be that way for this to work. So they all have to be in a three phase system. Start, finish, start, finish, start, finish, all the way around. Okay. Now, the wires are hooked up like this. You start with your B on your number one, go to your A number one in the second phase, through the B number one of your second phase, into the A number one in the third phase. So it's wound or connected in series, starting with B, A, B, A. You leave B alone on the last uh, phase of your coils. Number two, you do the same thing. Two, two, two in series. You leave A alone over here and you leave B alone over here. Same with number three. So now you have three uh, six wires that are left open. You'll have one, two, three on this first set of coils. That's your A, A, A. Those three wires you solder together. You connect all three of those wires. All your A1, A2, and A3 wires. Then on the last section of coils, because they always go in threes, ones, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You'll have three that are open. 